Want to know what Europe does for you? Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcast on the economic impacts of artificial intelligence. Saviour or demon? Despite the mixed views, there is global accord that artificial intelligence can greatly boost economic growth and productivity, but it comes with equally serious risks, such as rising inequalities or unemployment. So what should the EU do? Embrace the change or watch it from a safe distance? Stay with us. Artificial intelligence is already changing our lives and our economy. Whether in the form of algorithms, smart production machines or assistive technologies, it is deeply transforming the way in which people in modern societies live and work. Already today, smart assistants on smartphones such as Siri help users in a number of ways and all Tesla cars are interconnected so that anything one of them learns can be shared across the entire fleet. Artificial intelligence also matches prices in cars when one orders an Uber ride and curates what social media offer to a user based on their past choices. But with the rise of artificial intelligence come many important questions. For example, how much will it affect businesses, consumers and the economy in general? Employees want to know what artificial intelligence means for their job and income, while businesses are eager to find out how to make the most out of it. So what potential are we talking about exactly? Well, the potential of artificial intelligence to revolutionise production and help address major global challenges is recognised by many, including the OECD and the European Commission. Thanks to rapidly increasing computing power and connectedness, large amounts of data are more accessible than ever before, creating momentum for artificial intelligence technologies. The rise in the number of patent applications in this field shows that we've definitely moved from theory to action, with more and more commercial products and applications based on artificial intelligence reaching the market in areas as varied as telecoms, transport, medical sciences, agriculture and banking. Almost 80% of new patent applications come from China, the US and Japan. So how is Europe doing? Stay with us. Well, some argue that in this race, the EU has a structural disadvantage. Too small and fragmented a pool of data, which is a sine qua non condition for a thriving artificial intelligence ecosystem. So what do we need to do? Well, the EU certainly has the potential to leverage its high value-added manufacturing and industry base and use its well-qualified workforce to improve its position in the race. It can also use its regulatory powers and cloud to become a global leader in artificial intelligence governance, as well as use tools such as standards to its advantage. The European Commission sees artificial intelligence as one of the most strategic and promising technologies of the 21st century, but it will require a solid and coordinated framework to advance efforts and improve the EU's global position. According to a study covering 12 developed economies, by 2035, artificial intelligence could double global annual economic growth rates. That's impressive, but how will it drive this growth? Well, in three important ways. Through a strong increase in labour productivity, up by about 40%, the creation of a new virtual workforce capable of self-learning, and finally, it can also spawn the creation of new products and services, markets and industries, boosting consumer demand and generating new revenue streams. Other studies also foresee the next wave of digital revolution being unleashed with the help of massive amounts of data generated by the Internet of Things, which will eclipse the current Internet of People. And it is estimated that by 2030, 70% of companies will have adopted at least one type of artificial intelligence technology. Despite its positive impacts and productivity, the progressive substitution of labour by automation will not happen without problems. Stay with us. Indeed, some warn that it could lead to the creation of super firms that could wipe out mid-sized companies from the market. It may also widen the gap between developed and developing countries with less access to artificial intelligence and boost the need for workers with certain skills while rendering others redundant, which could have far-reaching consequences for the labour market. Experts also warn of its potential to increase inequalities, push down the wages of medium-skilled workers in comparison to high-skilled workers, and shrink the tax base. In fact, Bill Gates is one of the many who have called for robots to pay taxes if they take somebody's job. The idea was rejected by the European Parliament in 2017, but if automation leads to significant falls in income tax receipts, such a tax may become unavoidable in the future. 
All in all, it seems likely that while artificial intelligence has significant potential to boost productivity, the final effects will depend on the rate of diffusion across the economy and on investment in new technologies and relevant skills of the workforce. So if indeed technologies such as artificial intelligence, robotics and automation are widely deployed across the economy, there will be as much job creation as job destruction. There will be important workforce shifts across economic sectors, the nature and content of jobs will change in the future and new skills will become necessary. But this is not the first time we face big industrial challenges. Certainly not. And if we look at past industrial revolutions, we will see that job destruction is usually stronger in the short and medium term, while job creation prevails in the long term. So while concerns remain valid, a carefully designed EU policy would be able to foster the development of artificial intelligence while keeping the feared negative effects in check. The EU certainly has the potential to improve its position in this global race and ensure that artificial intelligence develops in a way that benefits all citizens. It also has the necessary tools to address market distortions, but in order to achieve this, it first needs to agree on a common strategy that will allow member states to pool their strengths and resources. Yes, it does. So while public authorities are starting to focus on artificial intelligence and national strategies are being developed, the need for a common European path to artificial intelligence is becoming more urgent than ever. You are listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts.